The stunning new details in the Delphi murder case, a judge unsealing documents related to the recent arrest of Richard Allen and the killings of two teenage girls in 2017, Libby and Abby. A determination that an unspent bullet found at this crime scene was cycled through Allen's gun. Alex Perez has that story for us and joins us here in the studio. Good morning, Alex. Hey, good morning, Robin. This is the first time we're learning how investigators is zeroed in on suspect Richard Allen. Besides that bullet, authorities say a number of witnesses put Allen on the scene. This morning, stunning new details in the mysterious murders of two young girls in Delphi, Indiana. A judge Tuesday defying prosecutors' requests and unsealing court documents, revealing some of what led police to charge Richard Allen with the 2017 killings of Libby German and Abby Williams. He's been charged with two counts of murder. According to the probable cause affidavit obtained by ABC News, investigators believe Allen is the man seen in this video recovered from Libby's cell phone and say the full video shows the man allegedly following the eighth graders on a bridge. One of the girls says gun. Then police say you hear the suspect's voice. Authorities say the girls do walk down a hill before the video ends. The affidavit also stating Libby and Abby's clothes were located in a nearby creek. And that when investigators carried out a search warrant at Allen's home, they seized boots, knives, and a 40 caliber gun that tests showed matched an unspent bullet found between the girls' remains. Their exact cause of death remains unclear. Everybody's going to keep them in their minds forever. According to that newly unsealed information, multiple witnesses placed a man resembling Allen near the Manan High Bridge where he allegedly encountered the girls just after 2 p.m. About two hours later, one woman told police she drove by a man on the side of the road who was wearing a blue colored jacket, blue jeans, and was muddy and bloody. Allen's wife, the document says, confirming to authorities he owns a similar jacket. 50-year-old Allen, who was charged last month, nearly six years after the murders, living about two miles from the crime scene and working at the local CVS. Libby German's heartbroken family still in disbelief. You know, it's hard. How can somebody do that and then just go on living life like nothing happened? I, I don't understand. Probably never will understand that. Prosecutors believe there may be others linked to the crime. If any other person had any involvement in these murders in any way, that person or persons will be held accountable. Allen has pleaded not guilty in that affidavit. He told police he was on the trail during the time of the murders, but denied any involvement. He also could not explain to investigators why a bullet from his gun was found at the scene, only telling police he did not allow anyone to use or borrow his weapon. And Allen is being held without bond. He's due back in court in February. Guys. All right, Alex, again, great to have you here in the studio with us. We're going to bring in ABC News Chief Legal Analyst Dan Abrams and ABC News contributor, former FBI agent Brad Garrett. Let me start with you, Dan, and the bullet that was found on the scene. How ironclad is that? When you're able to link back a bullet to a particular weapon, to ident an identifiable weapon, it's pretty powerful evidence. But I have to say that I still have a lot of questions here. I don't quite get why they interviewed him in 2017. He places himself at the scene, says he was there, he was walking there, generally resembles uh, the descriptions they've been given, although that has changed over time. Um, and only now in 2022 do they get that search warrant to go to his home. They find the weapon that he's had apparently since 2001. And you do wonder, well, why didn't they do that in 2017? We don't have all the answers yet, and we may get them. And Brad, let's bring you in on this and more on that unspent bullet. What, what does that mean in terms of tying it to the gun? And then why didn't they test it until just this year? So you have three possibilities. If he attempted to fire it, the firing pin would have hit the, the casing or the end of the bullet. That leaves a un unique tool mark that can be matched up. Two other possibilities are the extractor. In other words, that's what throws the bullet out of a semi-automatic weapon. And the third possibility would be the magazine. I got one other thing to say about this gun. I don't understand, maybe they did this, maybe they didn't, as to why they didn't run all of the surrounding gun stores of, of 40 caliber type weapons. Because I have solved a number of murders that way because typically people who commit crimes like this 
uh, have, have purchased a weapon legally and they have purchased it someplace close to their residence. Yeah, we are getting more information now, Dan, because of the affidavit. Prosecutors didn't want it unsealed. Judge went ahead and did so. Why? Oddly, the defense actually seemed happy that it was released. They keep saying, uh, see, now this will show you that there's very little there. I mean, look, prosecutors typically don't like this sort of stuff being released, right? They say, we want to hold it all for trial, etc. But, you know, look, the defense is going to get it anyway. This was actually a motion made by media organizations that say it's in the public interest, and the judge agreed saying it is in the public interest to release this, but it was interesting that the defense actually yeah. seemed to support it. And Dan, I want to bring Brad back in about something that you said, because, you know, Alan, as you said, Dan, in 2017, in 2017, authorities talked to him, and then again in 2022. What do you make of the things that he has, uh, what do you read into what he has allegedly said to officials? Well, he has been consistent. He put himself at the scene, on the bridge, at the time this crime occurred. He then repeated that again uh, in 2022. It, it's just sort of beyond me in these five years in a place that's very remote with a limited number of people that could possibly have done this, that it took this long. So many questions. Uh, Brad Garrett, Dan Abrams, yeah. truly appreciate it. Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.